So the big five for life are the five things that you most want to do, see, or experience in your lifetime. The five things that are so powerful to you that if you were able to do, see, or experience them, that on your deathbed, in the last few moments of your life, you'd look back and you say, you know what? No matter what else I did or I didn't get to, I got to my big five for life. And therefore, my life is a success as I define success. This is about what do you want in your museum, right? What do you want to fill that time with? Wow, good afternoon everyone. Thank you so much. And uh, I spoke a few weeks ago and followed uh, President Obama and I thought that was tough to follow, but those folks were absolutely amazing. Another round of applause. They were incredible. Absolutely incredible. That was awesome. That's a tough act to follow. Uh, thank you so much for choosing to be here today. Uh, one of our most precious resources is our time. And the fact that you have chosen to spend part of your life here with me is something that touches my heart greatly. And uh, I want to jump right in, if you will. So do me a favor. Uh, we're going to have a little, little experience here. So for the next 10 or 15 seconds, what I would like you to do is I would like you to make the noise that you would make on a day that was just, ah, okay. Okay, so you could, you could move your feet a little, you could clap your hands, you could be like, ah, whatever make for you the day that is just okay, all right? I need 10 seconds of that, ready? One, two, three, go. A day that is just okay. Fantastic, fantastic. All right, now I need you to, for the next 10 seconds, I need a pretty good day, right? And again, you can clap, you can make noise, whatever you want, but just a pretty good day, whatever that means for you. So ready, one, two, three, pretty good day. All right, so your pretty good days are pretty good, I can tell that. But for these next 10 seconds, what I'd like you to do is I would like you to give me the noise of the best day ever, okay? You woke up this morning and someone advised you that you had just won 50 million euro in the euro lottery. You turned over, looked over, and the person in bed next to you was the person of your dreams. You got out of the shower this morning and you were toweling off and you looked in the mirror and you thought to yourself, wow. I am hot, <laughs> all right? And anything on top of that would, which would make today the best day ever for you. And I want this to be so loud that anybody who is outside hears you and the overriding thought that comes to their mind is, that must be their best day ever inside there, all right? So at the count of three, best day ever, 10 seconds, one, two, three, go. <laughs> Very nice, very nice. I love that, I love that, fantastic, great job. So the question for all of us is how close is that energy to the way it feels on an average Monday morning? All right, so let's see if we can close the gap. Now, I'm going to do what's called a dynamic presentation today, and that is because I've spoken a few times already here in Europe. And so some of you may have been at some of those events. And so I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and then I'm going to change what we talk about based on your responses. So how many of you happened to see me in Cologne a few weeks ago? Awesome. Fantastic. All right. How many of you saw me before that at the Media Congress? Okay, fantastic, great. So <laughs> that makes it easy for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open tonight with our time with something that I debuted in Cologne because I wanna feel what it feels like with 5,000 people in this audience going completely silent, okay? I'll walk you through that experience. And then I'm gonna walk you through something else and then I think after that I'm gonna give you all new stuff. Does that sound all right? All right, fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so do me a favor, take anything that is in your hands and put it on the floor and take your feet and uncross them. And go ahead and take your hands and put them flat on your knees. And I would ask, I love all the photographers that are right around me, thank you so much for that. I would ask for this particular portion, just give me a little bit of quiet, okay? 
Fantastic. So, perfect. So hands flat on the uh, flat, hands are flat on your knees. Great. Feet are flat on the floor. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. Now, if you think that in closing your eyes it may make you uncomfortable in any way, you're welcome to keep them open. But I have found that it is much more powerful if you do indeed close your eyes. If you think that in closing your eyes you may tip to one side or the other, simply turn to the person next to you, introduce yourself, and say, I may get to know you even better in a couple of seconds. Fantastic. So I will let you know when it is time to open your eyes again, so you don't need to worry about that. And also, as you can probably tell, I'm all about having a good time. I'm all about laughter and loudness. For this particular portion of our time together, I would ask that you maintain the spy, maintain the space, and quiet throughout, especially the folks that are right here in the middle, because I can actually hear them talking right now. Perfect. Excellent. Quiet throughout. Thank you. Excellent. Please go ahead and close your eyes. Imagine if every moment of your life was recorded. All the things you did, all the things you said, all the places that you went, all the ways in which you spent your time. And towards the end of your life, a museum was built to honor you. Only the museum would show your life exactly how you lived it. So if 80% of your time was spent at a job that you didn't like, or on activities that didn't bring you joy, then 80% of your museum would be dedicated towards that. There would be videos and kiosks and pictures all showing you spending your time on those things that didn't bring you joy. If you love spending time with your family or your friends or on some particular passion or hobby, but for no matter what reason, you only spent 2% of your time on those loves, then no matter how much you wished it to be different, only 2% of your museum would be dedicated towards that. Maybe just a few pictures near the exit door. Imagine what it would be like to walk your museum. What would you see? How would you feel? Now imagine if heaven or the afterlife or however you perceive this whole experience to work actually consists of you being the tour guide for your own museum for all of eternity. Excellent. Take a nice deep breath in for me, please. And exhale. Go ahead and open your eyes. And shake your arms out a little. How do you feel? Pretty amazing. Nice. Give yourselves a round of applause. That was beautifully done. Now, my goal with an audience, and we only have a short amount of time together, my goal with an audience is always to try and give you something that you can practically apply in your own lives. How many of you are entrepreneurs? Okay, fantastic. How many of you are here more for the self-development side? I know it's a joint conference. So a mix of all. Okay, fantastic. So I'll try and make sure that I give you something that applies to both. We live in a very fast-paced world, and I know that the stress can get very intense at times, right? A lot going on. And I want you to know that if it's ever feeling that way for you, that I walked you through this experience of the museum today, but at any time in the future, you can walk yourself through your own personal museum. And this is the most amazing way to center yourself and the most incredible way to find the answers that you're looking for, even in the toughest of times. So I walked you through it today, but in the future, you can put yourself in a quiet environment. You put your feet flat on the floor, your hands flat on your knees, close your eyes, and just walk through your museum. Right? So if you take nothing else away from our time together, please take that with you and use it as you feel appropriate in your life. Now, thank you. And thank you for doing such a fine job. I, I, there is tremendous energy in having 5,000 people go silent for a moment and walk through their museum. Did you feel that as you were doing it? Yeah, that was very cool, so thank you for that. Now, I have found the way to create an amazing museum, a museum that you would be happy to walk, not just today, not just tomorrow, but literally for all of eternity, is because is based on something that's, is <laughs> catch my own voice there, is by focusing on something that I call your Big Five for Life. Now, how many of you have read the Big Five for Life book? Whoa, look at that. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so you know the essence of it. So very briefly, for the ones who haven't, let me get you up to speed, and let me talk about ways you can use this in your life. 
So the big five for life are the five things that you most want to do, see, or experience in your lifetime. The five things that are so powerful to you that if you were able to do, see, or experience them, that on your deathbed, in the last few moments of your life, you'd look back and you say, you know what? No matter what else I did or I didn't get to, I got to my big five for life. And therefore, my life is a success as I define success. This is about what do you want in your museum, right? What do you want to fill that time with? And the big five for life can be short-term in nature. We're going to jump ahead real fast here. They can be short-term in nature. You may say, you know what, well, just one time I want to watch the sunrise from the top of Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa. Just one time, right? They could be, yeah, who did that? Uh, they could be longer term in nature. You may say, I want to have a loving relationship with the people that matter most to me. And it's something that you think about every day, right? So the Big Five concept is based on something that I experienced during my travels in Africa. Everybody talks about the African Big Five, and it's these five specific animals. But this is about the Big Five for our lives and how we apply them. Now, because of our time today, normally what I would do is I, I would have you write down what's on your list, right? But because of our short time today, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. What I find with most audiences around the world is when I ask people to do it, they have maybe one, maybe two of their Big Five for life, right? Now, you all are a very creative bunch, I can tell already, and you're very enthusiastic, and so you may have more of those, and a lot of people have read the books, so you may have more of those. Right? But here's the takeaway if it's just a new concept to you or if you haven't quite applied it in your life yet. The risk if we don't know, don't know what our big five for life are is quite obvious and yet quite powerful. And that risk is if we don't know what they are, what are the odds that we're going to get to do, see, or experience them? It's probably pretty unlikely. Probably pretty unlikely. So let me jump to the way in which you can bring this about in your life. So how many of you know where you are right now? Just two hands. That's mildly terrifying. Not a trick question. How many of you know where you are right now? Of course, you're here having an amazing time, right? Incredible, con incredible conference. So when you know your big five for life, you know where you want to go. So I know where I am. I know where I want to go. What's the question to ask? Yeah, real loud, please. Oh, that was so brilliant. That was so beautiful. My friends, that question how that you just asked. As entrepreneurs, as people who are focusing on your own personal self-development, I want you to know that that question, how, is one of the most debilitating questions you will ever come across. Because every time you ask that question, how, what you encounter are learning curves and obstacles and barriers, right? And every one of those is like a mountain. And you say, yeah, but John, these are my big five for life. Nothing's going to keep me from my big five for life, right? So you climb that first mountain. You look up, what do you see? A second what? Second mountain, exactly. But you use some time, you use some energy, you say, no, these are my big five for life. You get to the top of the second mountain, you look out and you see another what? Another mountain. And what happens to most people by the time they get to the third mountain? They give up. They give up. My friends, the question is not how. The question is who. I cannot stress, stress this enough as it relates to you and your entrepreneurial ventures and you and your personal self-development. No matter what is on your big five for life list, I guarantee you that someone at some point in the history of this planet has done, seen, and experienced it or something close to it. If you want to rapidly accelerate your trajectory, find out who that person or those people are, learn everything you can about what they've done, and then imitate it, at least at the start. And that will get you started launching you over the tops of those mountains. Now, everybody on your feet for me, please. Real quick, everybody on your feet. Okay, I want you to turn and find someone to work with very quickly. Turn and find someone to work with, face them. Real fast. All right, I want you to look at the person you're working with and I want you to figure out who is less tall. Okay, very good. Now, who is less tall? Now, do me a favor. So the person who is less tall, you are A, okay? The other person is B, I'll let you figure that out. Now, A. A, A, I want you to introduce yourself to B using this exact terminology, right? I want you to say, hi, my name is, I want you to give your name, and then I want you to say, listen, you seem like a very nice person. I'm working on my big five for life, and I was wondering if you could help me. Okay, go. Okay, great, great. Now reverse. Now B, introduce yourself to A. Reverse. Okay. 
Fantastic. Find one more person to do it with. Find one more new person and do the exact same thing. All right. Fantastic. Fantastic. Let's see if I can get control of the audience. Fantastic. Good. Go ahead and have your seats. Very good. Go ahead and have your seats. I've lost all control of the room right now. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Go ahead and have your seats. Fantastic. Go ahead and have your seats. Great. Sorry, folks. Hate to interrupt a great conversation that I know is happening, but if you'd have your seats up here. Fantastic. All right, do me a favor. Give yourselves a round of applause. That was very well done. Now, which way did the energy in the room go as we did that? It went up, right? Instantly, instantly. Why is that? Because we're talking about something we genuinely are interested in, right? How many of you love small talk, that kind of pointless thing about how's the weather, you don't know what to talk about, you'll talk about nothing, right? Very rarely do people like that. Most people want to have meaningful conversations with others. The challenge is they don't know how to get into a, a meaningful conversation in a way that feels comfortable, all right? So how many of you heard me uh, asking you to do this and you were thinking to yourselves, oh, that might be a little awkward, right? Yeah? Well, which would be the first most awkward time to try out this way of introducing yourself? The first time. Which would be the second most awkward time? The second time. Great. We're past both of those now, aren't we? How many? So, <laughs> thank you. So my advice for you is that you're here at this amazing conference full of amazing people. And your big five for life, again, are the five things that matter most to you, the five things you most want to do, see, or experience in your lifetime before you die, right? While you're here and you're meeting each other, I encourage you to use this method of introduction and get to know people on a deep, deep human level. Are you up for that? Fantastic. If you're still thinking to yourself, okay, dude, but it's still going to be a little awkward, right? Then let me give you an even easier way, right? When you meet someone in the hall here or outside of this arena and you're at a business function, a social function, etc., walk up to somebody and say, hi, I'm John and you are, and they're going to give you their name. And just ask them a very simple question. If the weekend is almost here, just say, hey, so what are you doing this weekend, right? If the weekend just passed, say, hey, so what'd you do this weekend, right? And they're going to tell you all about what they're doing this weekend or about what they did last weekend, right? And human beings exhibit what's called mirroring behavior. So if I ask you that question, the question they're going to ask you is the exact same question back. They're going to say, oh, so here's what I'm doing this weekend. What are you doing this weekend, right? And at that time, you just take one of your big five for life and you just ease it into the conversation, right? You say, oh, well, interestingly enough, I'm going to spend the whole weekend doing research about New Zealand. I've always wanted to go to New Zealand. You ever been to New Zealand? Does that sound pretty easy to do? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I encourage you over the course of our time to have those conversations. How many of you like to help other people? Woo, look at that. That is awesome. Awesome. Do you think it might be easier to help another person in a meaningful way if you knew what their big five for life were? This is like the greatest gift ever, right? You can actually not just make a difference, but make a huge difference in someone's lives. So I encourage you to do that because what you will find, I promise you, if you try this just five times, okay, five times, in one of those five times, you will find that one of those people is the perfect who for you as it relates to one of your big five for life. And you will find that you are the perfect who for someone else in one of their big five for life. All right, let me tell you an example of the way in which this has come about in my life. The power of using the who technique. So uh, very early on in my writing career, my very first book, Das Café, uh, in the English language, I learned that it had sold copies on six of the seven continents in the world, right? 
Thank you. Thank you. For a guy who had no training as an author, no big plans to be an author, this was really something super cool. And I thought to myself, I got in my head, you know what would be really amazing is to know that it had sold on all seven continents, right? Which one do you think I had left? Antarctica, thank you, yes, geography major. So yes, I had Antarctica left, and I didn't really know much about Antarctica, so I got online and I started looking and I found out that in this amazingly large planet of billions and billions of people, I am trying to somehow inspire one of 2,000 people, right, in a location so remote that nothing gets in and nothing gets out for months and months on end to buy a copy of a book from someone that they've never met about a book that they've probably never heard of. Right? And then I discover that, whoop, I'm actually a little wrong because there's 2,000 people during the summertime in Antarctica. What time of year do you think I'm trying to do this? Not the summertime. There's only 200 people in all of Antarctica at this time. So my goal is to one of 200 people out of a planet of billions. It took me 27 minutes. 27 minutes because I used the who technique. I got on Google, I typed in something very simple. This is a very amazing phrase I encourage you to use on Google. Think about it in the context of my story. I typed in, who is in Antarctica? Yeah, it's as simple as that. Up comes a link with a guy named Ask Jack. Could the universe be sending a bigger signal? With a name like Ask Jack, what do you think I did? I asked Jack, exactly. So Jack is a meteorologist who was running all of these specials, and it turned out that Jack, the reason it popped up on my search is that Jack had done these studies in Antarctica. So sure enough, I sent an email. I said, hey, Jack, I'm asking. I said, my goal is to inspire people on all seven continents. I've got Antarctica left. Don't know the first thing about it. Is there any way you could give me any advice whatsoever? Send it off into the ether. Literally, within minutes, I get a reply back. An email that's this long from this guy I have never heard of who has never met me. And he's like, hey, sounds like a really cool project. Here's all the people that you need to be talking to. <laughs> Turns out that one of the organizations is located in the United States. He gives, me, he gives me their websites, the whole nine yards. So I click on it. I find their phone number. I call them up and I say, hey, my name is John Strzelecki. I'm the author of this little book. It's inspired people on six of the seven continents. And I'm trying to get to all the seven continents. And Antarctica is the one I have left. And Ask Jack told me to contact you. And you hear this big pause on the end of the phone. And she says, uh, actually, sir, I'm just the receptionist. Uh, <laughs> and she says, but hang on. Let me connect you with someone who I think can help you. So she connects me with this other woman. I tell my whole story again. Six of the seven books, Antarctica, all that's left. And she says the same words that you are going to hear when you employ the, the who technique in your life, in your ventures. She says... I can help you, all right? She said, how do you want to sell the book? I said, honestly, ma'am, I hadn't even thought that far ahead. <laughs> and I said, she said, do you have a website? I said, yeah, I have a website. But this is going back years and years. And she said, well, can you sell books to Antarctica? I thought, I don't think so, <laughs> all right? And she said, well, find an answer and get back to me. So I quickly get on Amazon, and I'm searching, like, can you order and send a book to Amazon? Turns out you can, right? And so I set up this auction on Amazon in the Amazon marketplace. And in the description, I put, please do not bid if you are not in Antarctica. <laughs> sure enough, I give her a call back. I say, here's the link. Here's what to do. Bam. Order goes out. Ten copies of the book going to Antarctica for a high, pres a high uh, you know, market rate in, in the uh, 200 people who are in Antarctica, 27 minutes of my own time. Here's the reason that story is important. Because if I, a completely clueless guy, could accomplish that in 27 minutes, not knowing anything about what I was trying to do, Imagine what you could accomplish for what you're working on. All right, let me share one more concept with you. So much to share and not enough time. That's my daughter, by the way. Everyone sees that picture and is like, oh, I knew instantly that was your daughter. 
And I'm like, what is it, the cheekbones? And they're like, no, you guys have the same hat, yeah. Uh, so I want to share one more concept with you, and we'll see how we stand with time, and I may go back on the slides. But I want to share a super cool concept with you, something that has changed my life dramatically, and I call it Focus on the One. And so imagine that you're on vacation in a hotel, all right? You're just relaxing, you're chilling out. The morning just happened, and you're just sort of doing nothing as the day begins. And there's a knock on your door. And you go to the door, you open up the door, and there's someone standing there. And he says, are you? And says your name. Yes, that's me. And he says, well, I'm very sorry to tell you this, but your crazy Uncle Leo has passed away. You said, crazy Uncle Leo? I, I didn't even know I had a crazy Uncle Leo. And he says, well, yes, you did, and your crazy Uncle Leo has passed away, and he's left you 15 million euro. And you say, oh, that crazy Uncle Leo. <laughs> I loved him. Yeah. And he says, well, I don't know if you completely understand. He says, crazy Uncle Leo left the money in a sealed steel box, and it's in the top of Mount McKinley, the highest peak in North America. And you say, oh, well, okay, that sounds a little weird, but okay. And he says, well, I'm not sure you completely understand. He says, in order to get the money, you have to do a rapid ascent of Mount McKinley. You have to climb it in less than 24 hours or you don't get the money. You're like, whoa, okay, that's a little weird, but okay. And he says, well, I'm not sure you completely understand. He says, if you decide not to try and get the money or you try and climb Mount McKinley, but it takes you more than 24 hours, then the 15 million euro goes to a hitman, and his job is to kill you. And you say, oh my gosh, that crazy Uncle Leo, he really was crazy, right? And the, the man says, best of luck, here's your airline tickets, your flight leaves in three hours. Well, you're totally stymied by this, you don't know what to make of this, so you're like, I gotta get some air. So you get in the elevator, you're heading down the stairs, heading down the elevator, the elevator doors open, you're not really paying attention, you get out, and strangely enough, you're on the convention floor. And amazingly enough, the giant billboard that announces the convention says, Mount McKinley Climbing Convention. And furthermore amazing, when you walk into the room, they've got all the climbers assembled into one of three groups, right? Those who decided not to climb, those who climbed, but it took them more than 24 hours, and those who climbed, and it took them less than 24 hours. Now, your plane leaves shortly. Who are you going to go talk to? The ones who made it in less than 24 hours, right? It's obvious. Why? Because your life depends on it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the sources of input that you receive as it relates to your life, as it relates to your entrepreneurial ventures, your life depends on it. Think about that. <laughs> Many times you say to somebody, you know, I'm thinking about starting this new business. Uh, do you know how many new businesses fail? Um, you know, all the input that you get is about all the reasons it's not going to work, right? If you're trying to take your life in a whole new direction, I did an interview earlier today with a super cool person and she's living a minimalist life driving around the country, right? How many people do you think would tell her, gosh, that's, I don't know, like dangerous, that's not a good idea, right? Allow yourself to surround yourself with who's who are doing, seeing, and experiencing super cool stuff as you are trying to do super cool stuff in your own lives. I'll give you one more piece of this as it relates to focus on the one and then my time here is done. Imagine you've got a good friend, someone that you meet every Friday, right? Every Friday you get together, you sit at a cafe, you talk about how the week went, right? Now during the course of your week, you interacted with a hundred clients. Eighty of those clients said, wow, I mean, just so great, so great to work with you. I mean, you're, you're always so dedicated and so passionate about what you do. It's just a genuine pleasure to work with you. That's 80 of the hundred. Nineteen of the hundred said, wow, I mean, if it wasn't for you, we could never do what we do. Like, you are so amazing. You are so spectacular. It's such a pleasure to work with you, to be with you. It's just awesome, right? That's 19. One person says, I don't know how you got your job, and I don't know how you're keeping it, because you're horrible, right? I hate interacting with you. I'm so sick of it every time I have to call you. It's, this is just a disgusting experience. 
You meet your friend on Friday. That was your 100 interactions with your clients. You meet your friend on Friday, and they say, how was your week? Who do we talk about? Why, right? Why do we talk about that one guy? Listen, if 80% of the people think you're doing an amazing job, and 19% of the people think you are doing just spectacular at what you do, then focus on one of them. Because you will never please all the people, no matter what you're doing, no matter how pure your intentions are, you will never please anyone, and it has nothing to do with you. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been an honor and a privilege to be able to spend some time with you here today. Thank you so much, and I wish you all the best as you are out there living your Big Five for life. Thank you.